Three months ago, I made a video on a PSX shader to make your game look like a PSX game. It was for Universal Render Pipeline in Unity, and well, it does exactly as its name suggests. It kind of makes your game look like it's a PS1 game. Then a few days ago, I saw this video. The YouTuber here talks about the basics of setting up a PS1 style project in Unity. But watching the video, I realized something. The things that he tells you about, they're just like very basic at the very beginning, like the very bottom of the barrel stuff, the very bare bone of starting up a project. Even though he just talks about very basic stuff, a lot of gray areas were left out for beginners who just want to get into this genre. These gray areas can potentially leave newcomers to just, you know, hang around not understanding what they're supposed to do. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about how you can properly set up a project to make it look like a PS1 game. The things you have to do, the things you have to look out for, the errors you can make, and how to fix the most common problems. And also, I'm going to be giving a step-by-step -step tutorial, so yeah. Most of the beginner-friendly concepts and the beginner-friendly things are going to be covered in this video. But I would recommend you watching the original video as well. And consider this video as a sort of like a sequel or maybe a prequel to the original video. So go ahead and watch that first. This video is going to be separated into a few segments. First few being how to set up the scene, what shaders to use, how to set up the shaders, and the second parts being the visual look, the aesthetics, and the post-processing effects that you want to use, the way you would interpolate the scene, and etc, etc. So without wasting time, let's get started. Starting off with the skybox. Skybox is very important when you're making a game like this. Now, the skybox depends sorely on what kind of game you're making. If you're going for a game that has a different kind of aesthetic, then you're going to have to pick up a skybox that's similar to that. I would recommend you going around Google searching up cube maps for specific skybox because you don't really need any high resolution skybox or anything. Any photo from the Google images would do just fine. Drag and drop the image, set it as a cube, create a new material, search for cube map and then just assign the material to it. And then just drag and drop the material to your scene and it should automatically apply itself. Play around with the exposure and the tint color of your skybox to determine what kind of look you're going for. This is purely aesthetic based so each one is going to be different. For me, I went with something like this to keep the video faithful to the original video that it says equal or equal to. Now, time for downscaling the texture. The thing that brought that iconic look to the PS1 games were the low resolution textures it used. Now, back in the days, PS1 games didn't really have a lot of, you know, space to work with. Each one of the textures were around 64 by 64 pixels, basically stating that the textures were not that big at all, so which resulted in some crispy and quirky looking textures, which is something that we're gonna have to look for, like, you know, trying to recreate the same graphics. It's a very important part, so we can't miss it. Luckily for us, Unity has a built-in way to downscale textures. Also, while you're downscaling it, make sure to set the filtering mode to point no filter, because the PS1 games had no filtering option to it. So, go ahead and downscale the texture as much as you wanna. Don't do it too much, but do it till you get something that's sort of pixelated, but not that subtle. If you were to do it too much, you would be left with a huge pixelated mess that basically looks like shit. So once you get something that you're happy with, let's move on to the shaders. For this one, we're going to be using the URPPSX, the one that I previously, you know, made a video about. You can go ahead and watch that video if you want, like, a lot of details, but for now, just download it and, and slap it onto your project. So once you have the shader ready, Go ahead and get some 3D models to, you know, test the shader on. I don't know, whatever. And now, let's start by creating the very first thing, the terrain. For the terrain, I'm not going to be using any separate 3D models or anything. I'm going to be using the Unity's terrain system. Now, you might be asking yourself, does this terrain, like, have all the functionalities for being a PS1 terrain? Well, actually, yeah. You can actually create low-resolution, low-poly terrains right from Unity. You don't really need any kind of 3D modeling software or any kind of extra mesh or anything. So I'm going to start by lowering the terrain size. So go into the settings and I'm just going to set it to 520 by 520. Then what you want to do is to just start sculpting your terrain and make it look like it has a landscape or something. Go ahead and be rough and just create random shapes and just, you know, hills and tops. It doesn't really matter and it, it doesn't even matter if it just looks way too detailed. We're going to be making it, making it low poly just in a bit. But just for now, create a terrain that looks somewhat, you know, like a terrain or something that you can place trees around. It completely depends on what kind of game you're making. So yeah, just be creative with yourself. Okay, now go to this option, the terrain height resolution, and start changing the resolution. 
I can you can just go ahead and like you know lower it as much as you wanna. I would recommend you setting it to something like 64 by 64 to get that low resolution, low poly look on the terrain. So once that's done, it's time for texturing. Create a new material and assign the texture to it. Now don't worry about this red glow around the material, we're going to be fixing it just in a bit. So this is the material that we're going to be assigning to the terrain. Go to need the settings and just assign this material to the terrain. On the material from here, search for URPSX and you should get this. So I'm going to be selecting this second option for now just to you know demonstrate but we're going to be changing that in a bit. Now assign your material that you want to give your terrain and you should already have something that looks somewhat like a PS1 game. It looks ugly but just go to the tiling option and just set the tiling to something that you know makes your terrain look good. Then you can just go ahead with this play around with these values. I'm not going to be explaining them all right now. You can watch the video if you want to. I'll be linking that in the description. So for now, I'm gonna be just going with some basic settings to you know create sort of like a vertex jitter option, uh, like effect and other things, and for the tiling and other stuff. Now, one thing on the original video that was set was to use fog, but if you try using fog with this shader, you'd realize that there is no fog. I mean, why isn't there any fog? Well, the thing is, the shader that you're currently using does not support fog. The PBR one does, and this is a very crucial detail that you might miss while using this shader onto your project. The fix is pretty easy though. Just go into the shader and instead select the PBR one. And now you'd realize your project looks like shit, but don't worry about it, we're gonna be fixing it. Don't mess around with the settings too much, I'm gonna just keep this lit, and I'm gonna also make it use specular light as well. But I'm gonna also keep it lit, and you know, other settings, I'm gonna keep it a default. Now to fix the red glow, go into the lighting tab on the environmental tab, and from there to set the environment reflection to custom. And also set the environment lighting to skybox from skybox to color which we'll be doing further up ahead and then you can see your fog is working now now you can just go ahead and play around with the settings and just select something that fits with your you know environment and something i went with something like this so you can just go ahead and do that for me i think this looks fine it looks originally you know it looks faithful to the original video as well we turn off the fog to work around with the other things now, the second part is the environmental details. And while making a game like this, just for my game, or this scene in specific, the very basic, or the very main thing, are the trees. Now, using the same shader that we used for the terrain, or the every other thing that we're going to be doing in the game, you'd realize that the shader doesn't actually have support for transparent materials. Or maybe it does, and I'm too stupid to realize that. But in my opinion, or as far as I know, shader doesn't actually have you know like alpha clipping or something like that which makes it really difficult for it to use you know for it to be used on something like tree leaves or something like that so to work my way around this problem i had to be a little bit creative with the leaf textures so rather than you know instead using the shader i instead used an unlit shader that is provided by the urp itself which had the alpha clipping and had a similar result except for not having the vertex shader option or something like that. I also went ahead and, you know, changed the leaf textures manually to point no filter since we're not using the shader anymore. And with the fog enabled, this sort of looks fine. And, you know, since we're using an unlit shader, we can also change the leaf colors as we want to. Now, another crucial detail that the original video did not cover was how to place the trees onto the terrain. Now, if you're like any other normal person, you would directly start using the terrain system to plant the trees. But you'd realize that something is wrong. There is an ugly black thing all around your trees each time you place one. And trust me, I have just gone through so much trying to fix this issue. And I have no idea why this happens. I've changed the uh, specular light. I've changed the shader type. But in my opinion, just nothing works. And it just looks ugly as hell. I did get it to work once, but the trees look very weird. So uh, I opt for a new fix for this you know weird looking problem i went with go painter it basically is the same but it's a prefab pa painter and allows you to paint prefabs onto any surface or terrain or anything i also implemented a mini first person controller just to see how the game would look from a player's perspective and it's a very important thing because you don't want your game to look completely weird when you you know switch to a player's perspective yeah, so I would recommend you setting up a mini first person controller, walking around your scene a bit just to, you know, see how the scene looks. So yeah, we're in Unity right now and I implemented the, I set it up the first person controller, so this is what it looks like. Um, my computer is too shitty to record using your OBS, so you get the idea, it just looks 
fine, I guess. So yeah, let's work on the environment. I set it up Go Painter and started placing trees randomly. Go Painter has a very handy option to, you know, sort of like randomize trees and stuff. And using it is very simple. I will not be going into details because there's a dedicated tutorial on their YouTube page. You can just go ahead and search for it or you can also find it on the asset page. That's it's there's a video over there as well. So I'm gonna be leaving the Go Painter link in the description. It's a very, very handy tool and it has a lot of kind of like you know customization and functionalities, has you know a lot of randomization options and stuff. So yeah, I definitely would recommend you using something like Go Painter or something, and I would not recommend you using the Unity Terrain Systems tree placement because it's very messed up and I don't know why it just doesn't work with the shader at, at all. Once you have a rough design, go ahead and play it again just to see how the game turns, you know, turned out and things that you might want to change about your game. So another thing is that the environment, like I said, it really matters. So for now, you can see that trees don't really match up with the environment that I'm, you know, working with. So we're going to be changing that just in a bit. Also, a quick little tip, go ahead and turn on GP instancing for every single material that you have. This will make your game run a lot, a lot smoother, trust me. If you have too many objects in the scene, GPU instancing is your best friend. Trust me, it literally makes a huge impact on the performance. Now to make the trees look like as if they belong to the environment. You can go ahead and, you know, play with the color position setting just to, you know, make things a little bit darker or, you know, just to add a little bit more color precision as the PlayStation 1. So I will not be adding it too much. I will leave it to 8 by default on you know each one of the materials of tree bark and the tree trunks but for the leaves the leaves are pretty interesting since i use the unlit shader that is provided by the universal Render pipeline i have an option to sort of you know tweak the colors of the leaf material so as you can see if i were to go into this tree that's really nearby and switch it so as you can see i can actually change the uh, leaf color and the like base color i can actually implement and sort of add a extra color on top of the original pre-existing texture which makes the trees look as if they belong to the environment so since i'm working with a sunset type of scene so i think changing my trees leaf colors leaves color to something like uh, dark maroon or maybe a little bit red or a little bit black dark type of color would really suit or like you know really complement the scene overall nicely after tweaking around a little bit, I got something that I'm really happy with. So I'm just gonna keep these settings. Okay, it's time for post-processing. While making a PS1 games, a lot of post-processing options are not available for us. We can't use fancy effects such as anti-aliasing or bloom or even ambient occlusion. So the things that we're gonna be doing with post-processing is just to enhance the way the overall scene looks. So for me, I have selected the sunset scene. So for this one, we're going to be using a lot of color adjustments and a lot of shadows and mid-tones and a lot of lift gamma grain to make, you know, adjustments to the scene and make it as appear that the entire scene is sort of red and stuff. So basically, we're going to be doing a lot of color adjustments with the post-processing effects. Go ahead and create a global volume and just start adding the effects such as color adjustments and lift gamma grain and, you know, stuff like that. So for me, I'm going to be, you know, using a new post-processing volume. And I'm just going to show you what happens if you were to use a lot of bloom and other things. Also, make sure to, you know, use check post-processing underneath your first-person character controller. And make sure there is no anti-aliasing, like the anti-aliasing is set to none. You can also use dethering from here, but I never found any, you know, actual use of this thing. So I'm just going to turn this off anyway. Using effects such as bloom and tone mapping usually results your game not looking retro at all. So we're just going to be using, you know, color adjustments and stuff. Also, I should mention, there's a custom renderer feature in this shader, which is the pixelation effect that allows you to determine the amount of pixels available on the screen. To use this, add the pixelation effect as a post-processing setting, and then go into your settings and forward renderer and add a new renderer feature, and just add the pixelation system. So from here, you should see a little bit of change on your screen. So yeah, go ahead and onto your global volume once you've added this to your forward renderer, and from here, you can actually, you know, play around with the color precision values and the height and width of your screen but i would recommend you not using the height and width and just leaving the resolution default to you know 720p or something like that or maybe 1080p it doesn't really matter i wouldn't really recommend you going with a you know 2 by 9 aspect ratio or something like that to you know suit the original ps1 look because some things are purely aesthetic based and we don't want 
our eyes to hurt so I would just recommend you doing that if you were to use the original PS1 resolution in this case things will not look that good um, things such as that are way too far away would lose a lot of details and the entire screen would just look like a pixelated blurry mess so I would recommend you not using the height and width at all and just turn them off and let the shader do its magic it will add a slight amount of pixelation which is just what we want Okay, now the actual post-processing stuff. Add a shadows, highlight, and mid-tones, and start, you know, playing around with the values. So for in this case, I want the scene to look a little bit more orangish and stuff, so I'm gonna add those things in. You can also use a lift gamma green to, you know, sort of, you know, change the way the scene screen looks as well. I'm gonna set this sliders to somewhat red or an orangish color to, you know, sort of perfectly blend between the fog and the scene and the skybox and other things. So yeah, it's completely aesthetic based and if you want to do it, it's up to you. If you don't, that's also up to you. But for me, I think the end results look very nice. So yeah, let me just show you the things that I did. So once the environmental stuff was done, now it's time to add the smaller details such as the cabins and other environmental things. I used this cabin asset that I got from H.io and then I extracted its material from the prefab and now it's time to assign these materials to their shader and then we assign them back to the cabin itself. This can be pretty tedious considering the fact that each time you assign the a new material to the shader, it kind of you know takes away the texture, so you have to re reassign the texture. But once you do that, you just you know just go through it anyway. And once you're done with it, you also need to watch out for these weird issues. You might turn you might want to turn off the specular option, a you know camera clipping option, and just turn off the lid function functionality completely. You also want to add the vertex jittering, which by the way, I'm not going to be explaining, but it, it's just a type of jittering that happens depending on your camera view, which used to happen because the PS1 had a very weird texture mapping issue due to the limited amount of resources it had. Here's a quick way of adding lights. Since we're making a PS1 game, making a physical light is really not practical. So instead, model a cone like this and assign a sort of fading gradient material to it. Bring it into Unity and for the material, all you want to do is to create a new unlit material, assign it to the light cone and then turn on the transparency option. This is a great way to add fake volumetric PS1 looking lights. So what you can do is add in a car or something like this that I have added in the scene and then assign that, you know, light thing and just, you know, place it onto the car's headlight to give it that, you know, cool looking PS1 light thing effect or something like that. I don't know. should eventually look something like this looks pretty cool so yeah another small you know tip is to go into the lighting and the environment section and make sure to set up the environment lighting to uh, color instead of skybox this will you know fix some weird lighting issues and uh, you know turn on the fog and other thing so yeah i'm pretty happy with how the scene turned out a lot more can be done with this scene a lot of other improvements and adjustments can be done but that's completely up to you now I'm not going to be making the video any bigger than this because the bigger the video is, people tend to not watch the video at all. So yeah, like you said, go ahead and watch the original video and then come back to this video or something. This video is like for the bare bone, uh, you know, just the basics and the advanced stuff for the beginners. So yeah, thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe or something like that. You can also check out my Patreon, it's $2 a month or something like that. You get access to all my files and you know early alerts and stuff if you want to support the channel please go ahead and check my patreon page out or maybe even just put a subscribe to the channel so yeah thanks for watching see you later